Geography 1301, here's a tutorial on using Google Earth. When you download and install Google Earth and you open it, you should see something that looks like this. It's uh, basically the Earth and you can put your cursor on it and click the left key and move the Earth all around, spin it in odd directions and take a look at it. Um, what I want to start with today is looking at how to use some of the tools in Google Earth. So first let's find uh, San Antonio and once you get everything mixed up it's easy to do if you just come right up here to the uh, fly to column or fill in the, the line right here and just type in uh, San Antonio It helps if you put Texas because there's more than one San Antonio in the world. And it will fly to San Antonio for you. You can see here we are zooming in. And you'll you'll notice right over here um, a new window opened with some ads and things in it. We can just close that down. And let's zoom into Kelly Field or Kelly uh, uh, Port San Antonio and we're going to measure the the length of the airfield so it's right here you can see you can see the landing strip right there let's just zoom in by double clicking and get it wide in the screen you can click and stop and you can also if you have a roller on your mouse you can roll in and you can roll out you can also use these tools right over here to zoom in or zoom out. Okay, the first uh, tool we're going to use is the measurement tool. It's this. It looks like a a ruler right up here in the top. So I'm going to click on the ruler, and we are going to measure a line. It says we have the choice of line or path. So right now we're going to measure a line, and let's measure it in feet. We just click the drop-down menu, click feet. We're going to go to one end of the runway and click. As you can see, the, the cursor is not a, a hand any longer. It's a like a oh um, something to aim through. And we're going to click once. We're going to drag our cursor down to the bottom and click again. And we can read on here that the length of the airfield is 12,578 feet, um, more, more or less. All right, and what we want to do is clear that. And now let's find out how far an airplane would have to go if it landed and then taxied into the airplane parking area. So we're going to go to path. So I'm right here, up here. We're going to click on path and we're going to measure in feet again. And the same thing goes. I'm going to click right here at the top of the runway. And I'm going to come down here at the bottom of the runway and click again but now I can keep clicking I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna click right there on the little airplane that you'll see if you zoom in and we'll see that the length of this path from here to here is 18,122 feet and we can um, clear that and remove it by clicking the X. If you need to zoom in to see where we were going, um, we we're going right here. And for example, you could even see on here in feet how many feet it is from the tip of this airplane to the tail. It's a 253 foot airplane. Okay, let's see what else can we do here. Um, what I want you to do now is uh, install that file that I uh, provided for you and to install a file it's a .kmz that's Google Earth's location files so I'm gonna go up here to file I'm up here in the top corner and I want to go to open just like you're opening a Word document or a PowerPoint or anything else you click open and you go and you find wherever you stored that file I put it in Geography 1301 under Google Earth, and it's GE Practice 1. 
kmz. So I click on it once, and or I can double click, I suppose. Click open. And now over here in my places, you can see that gepractice1.kmz is open. And if I, there's a little triangle right here in the corner, and if I trick, click rather on that triangle, it will open it up to where it reads Northwest Vista College, El Solitario, Santa Elena Canyon, Cocoa Crater, San Andrews Fault, and the Sultan Sea. What we want to do first is go to Northwest Vista College. So right here, I'll click on Northwest Vista College. We can click on it twice and it will spin us around and it will take us there. And you can see the thumbtacks that I've placed. And we zoom into the college and what I've asked you to do here is tell me how long it is uh, from the top of the lake to the bottom. So we will close that picture. We can zoom in a little bit further so we can get the entire lake in here. We get our ruler tool and we click up here at the top of the lake where the water runs in and we click down here let's click where the water runs out right here at the dam and we'll see that it's a 623 foot long lake more or less in fact we could go from one side of the lake to the other to see how wide it is it's 391 foot lake or we can go from this island we can see how wide the island is it's an 85 foot island from top to bottom it's 113 feet so we can continue doing this kind of thing um, how big around is the island? Well, we can start right here and click and click and click and keep clicking around until we basically get a rough measurement of the size of the island. It's 304 feet around. So there are some things you can do with measuring that are practical things to do with uh, Google Earth. Now let's see what else we can do. Let's take a look at El Solitario. It's the next thing on our list here. El Solitario is a former um, stratovolcano or composite volcano out in the Big Bend area. So I'm going to double click on it and it's going to take us all the way out to Big Bend. This way you don't have to know where the crater is. It will take us right to it. And I've written here that I want you to find the distance across in miles from top to bottom and then the distance at the widest point from uh, left to right. So let's run through this real quick. We get our measuring tool a ruler up here at the top and in this case we're clicking on line and we want to know what it is in miles instead of feet so we click the drop down menu find uh, miles we'll select miles and then we'll go from north to south and we can see here from this distance here it's about five miles from the top of the crater to the bottom of the crater uh, from the top of the crater north to the bottom of the south. And this is a, this is called the caldera. It's no longer a crater. It's a collapsed uh, composite volcano. And let's get our ruler tool one more time. Uh-oh, we need to clear that out. Cancel that. Get our ruler tool one more time and go from the widest point over here in the west and see how far it is to the widest point of the caldera here in the east. And we have about 5.10 miles. And let's clear that out. Close this. And if we look over here on our layers, we have borders and labels. I have mine checked, but if I uncheck it, let's take a look. Drop down that menu. And we want to click in here so that we can see borders and labels. And you'll see that a really small mountain looking shape popped up right there. and Let's zoom in and take a look at that. This is Needle Peak. Needle Peak is a peak within the collapsed volcano El Solitario. And if we click on that, it gives us information about the uh, geographic feature. It's coming up. It takes it a second to load. And we can find out, uh, for example, this is information coming from, it comes, it pulls directly from Wikipedia. And the elevation of Needle Peak is uh, 4,608 feet. You can see the profile from southwest to northeast. Um, you can see the profile line written across, uh, drawn across the topographic map. We can change it to look at it from uh, different directions, and then we can read about it as well. Now there are a variety of these all around on the 
Google Earth that we can take a look at. Now let's move from El Solitario to Santa Elena Canyon in Big Bend National Park. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to double click on Santa Elena Canyon. And it takes us right straight to it. And we want to view the image of the canyon and uh, the 14 mile long upthrown block that is out there is a limestone upthrown limestone block. Let's uh, clear the information out. Double click so we can zoom in. And we can see it from the top. Now this is Mexico on the bottom. This is the United States up here at the top. This is Big Bend National Park. And what we're looking at from the top view here is an upthrown block on this side and a, a downthrown block on this side. This is the Rio Grande coming right through here. Here's the border. And what I'd like to do is take a look at it from a side view. So what we're going to work on is using these tools right up here to look around. So if you place your cursor, I'm going to zoom in here. If you place your cursor right here on this top arrow and hold the mouse down, you'll see the earth kind of spinning into where we're no longer looking straight up, we're looking horizontal. So we're looking at it from a side angle. And we want to kind of shove the picture up. And here's Santa Elena Canyon right here. We can grab right up here on the north and we can spin this. And we can come around and look at it from kind of the east. And I can double click and zoom into it. Double click again, zoom in a little closer. Now we can see the profile of the canyon, uh, Santa Elena Canyon right here. Here's the upthrown block and here's the downthrust block. This is all limestone uh, right through here, Mexico on this side and Texas on this side. Zoom into it a little further and we'll stop right there. And what we want to do is look at some photographs of this. So we can go over here to photos on our layers click photos and you'll see that all the, the little photo images pop up and uh, let's click on one the Rio Grande looks like it's taken in a minute to load so it's a uh, panoramio is a place where people can store photos that show up in Google Earth so here's a panoramio photo slowly loading Slowly loading, still loading. Anyway, it looks like it's going to take it a while. So we can skip that. Perhaps on yours it opens up uh, quite a bit faster. But you can click around the different uh, pictures here. And if they would load faster, um, see the, the area around here. Take a, a minute to explore that and wait for some pictures to come up on uh, your computer screen. Meanwhile, rather than waste your time, let's uh, close this part down and let's go take a look at Cocoa Crater in uh, Hawaii. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to double click on Cocoa Crater and it's going to take us uh, across the Pacific to Cocoa Crater and uh, Hanauma Bay. Cocoa Crater is right here. You can click on the images and, and take a look at uh, different pictures here if they would come up a little more rapidly. I'm going to turn them off right now and I'm going to go over here and turn these photos off so we're not pulling so much stuff in. And you can see Cocoa Crater which is um, uh, part of an old volcano that helped form the Hawaiian Island chains. Um, we can measure the crater across. It's uh, about half a mile across this direction and uh, about a half a mile across that direction as well. We can also slide down here and look at Hanoma Bay and what's going on here if we zoom in. This is an old crater right here and what happened is the ocean kept wearing away at it and eroding until it collapsed on this side and now it's a bay. We can take a look at this from the side by going up here and holding down the, the top arrow 
and we can get a profile view of Coco Crater and the surrounding area. And you can see how it's beginning to erode right across the top here. And you can explore around the, the Hawaiian Island chains as well as if you want to, um, you can actually with Google Now, Google Earth Now, you can go, um, you can go underwater. So, for example, these are seamounts. Seamounts are uh, small volcanoes that are underwater in the ocean off of the coast of Hawaii. And you just keep clicking in, clicking in, and clicking in. And now we're underwater. We can use um, our tool right here to show us a horizontal view by just holding it down until we see some light coming up here. Now we're looking as if we are underwater. Here's the ocean above us. And now you can see the, the outline of the, it's called bathymetry when we're looking at the ocean from below. Um, you can spin it around, take a look at different features, these volcanoes that have not formed. It might someday form into an island. Okay, and moving on, let's take a look at the San Andres Fault. San Andres is a transform fault. Let's get up to it. And there's a portion right here we can see where the fault actually comes right down through here. And it's the land is split where now the ocean has come in. And this is a, a bay just outside of Marin. And San Francisco is right here. Oh, sorry, San Francisco is right here, right in the, the same line as the fault. So the fault, San, the San Andreas Fault runs right through here. In fact, it's the same fault that formed, the same way this bay right here is forming, formed this bay a long time ago. And you can actually follow down and see how the San Andreas Fault looks. So if we click on the last one here, the Salton Sea, it will take us down to the bottom end of the San Andreas Fault where it has created a lake. In fact, the San Andreas Fault continues to run down into the Gulf of California, and that's what makes this Gulf of California right here. So the San Andreas Fault runs from up here all the way down to here, and we have one block moving one direction and one block moving another direction. Um, one more measurement tool, we can look in miles we can measure from, let's say, this end of the San Andreas Fault down to here. And it's roughly 509 miles from top to bottom on the, the land portion of it. So there's a quick tutorial on how to use the measurement tool. I'm downloading and opening a KMZ file, as well as looking at uh, photos. And you can explore some of the other items over here in the layers. In fact, um, you can look at traffic and three-dimensional buildings in San Antonio and a variety of things. And that's it for this tutorial.